Ready? Go. Okay. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's been a heck of a long time since we made our last video, but we are definitely back up and running again now that the world is starting to go back to normal. And today we are at the Canadian Forces Base Board and Military Museum with Frank. Frank, do you want to just introduce yourself? My name is Frank von Rosenstiel. I'm the, uh, I run the workshop here at the Base Board and Museum, the restoration shop. If you're interested in volunteering for any of our projects, we've got lots of vehicles on the go, uh, some very major restorations, and we need uh, individuals with the right kind of experience also. So on that end, why don't we start with a bit of an update on the Flak Panzer, because obviously work has still been going on uh, for the past two years, and definitely we've got some big plans for this year. Yes, work on the Flak Panzer has never stopped, even through COVID. Um, our members have stayed on, on the project the entire time doing small components. Uh, they're all very time consuming. And some of you that have been following it on Facebook or anywhere else have seen uh, Rob's work uh, on the many components. And that right, that right now, what they're concentrating on is the weapons mount and getting that all functional and cleaned up. Um, we've got major work we're trying to get done on it, but as everywhere, there's always a roadblock coming up. So we just keep plugging away. Um, we've also been sorting a lot of our donations that came in into the vehicle side of the house, uh, pickups, various jobs that need doing. We've, uh, we've done several events this year. So that also keeps us busy. We've got several more coming up in the next month or two. Uh, we hope you can see us at some of these events. And these are all events that they can find on the Facebook page. Yes, yes. Or the OMVA page also. Right. Now, the other thing I noticed is that it looks like the compound has a couple new vehicles here. Do you want to talk a bit about the new vehicles that have been coming through the museum? Yes, we've, uh, we've uh, gotten six new vehicles into the collection through the D&D side of the house. Uh, a 113 R of light, an M548 cargo carrier, an M113 CNR Lynx, uh, MLVW MRT, and an Iltis line vehicle and an Iltis trailer. And one non-vehicle type item that is a SEV pod, and it'll be probably the only one that still exists in the country, and it's a post office, fits in the back of an ML. As well, we've also got uh, a couple new Jeeps, I believe. Yes, we've gotten in three M38A1s, a 53, a 67, and a 70. Uh, the, seven, the 67 is the most interesting as it has uh, history going back to Cyprus and the UN mission there. Uh, I have photographs of it in Cyprus, in a compound, probably late 67, early 68, when it was still a brand new vehicle, along with 30 others that were brand spanking new. Right. So. Why don't we talk a bit about what we were doing here today? So today was mostly about organizing all the vehicles that had come in, getting the compound rearranged so everything fits neatly and properly, and uh, just doing a general tidy up all day today, using some of our other vehicles as, as tow vehicles with our tow bars. And definitely you guys are going to see that coming up. There's not going to be too much uh, running commentary, actually none at all. <laughs> because it was just too busy of a day. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy that kind of footage. Let us know in the comments. And uh, if this is the, the method that works, then we'll continue on in the future doing this to show off what our work days are like. Great. Thank All you. Right. See you guys around. So we will be having commentary for the rest of the video after all because I realized after editing it that it would just be a series of assorted clips without context otherwise. And I doubt that would be too much fun or interesting to watch. First things first, we've got the AVGP Cougar out today and we'll be using that with the T-Lab for moving around all the vehicles. First vehicle that we're going to be moving is the MLBW, which stands for Medium Logistics Vehicle Wheeled and is the Canadian version of the American M35. The plan is to drag it straight backwards first to create some space for moving the other vehicles. And to do that, you can see the guys are connecting the tow bar now. So we can use the front of it to attach to the tow hook of the MLBW and drag it. Okay. You're in control now. Oh, wait. 
Now that we've got the MLVW attached, the next thing to do is to turn off its parking brake. And we're also sending a volunteer into the vehicle to steer it, just so things roll much more smoothly when we move it. Okay. No park brake then? Yeah. Sure, it's in neutral. I think it is. Neutral transmission? Yep. That's neutral anyway. Yeah, he's going to want to load up on you probably. Go get, go well, what, what I would say is just go straight. Oh, All right. Yeah. Straight down. The next vehicle that we'll be moving is the Lynx, and it's going to be pushed backwards in a bit of a S-shaped movement to be parked beside the other two Lynxes that we've got. What the guys are doing now is attaching the two tow bars to the front of the Lynx, and then we'll bring around the T-Lav and back it up so the tow bars attach onto the T-Lav's tow hook. Now it's going to seem like it was very quick move in this video, but there are actually quite a few parts that I had to cut out to keep this video short. Notice how Frank is out in front of the driver as a ground gun. What he's doing right now is keeping an eye on the whole situation and giving hand signals to guide the driver. In these kind of movements, the ground guide is always the one in control of everything, and it's really more like he's taking remote control of the driver than anything else. The next vehicle we moved was the M548. This is a tracked logistics vehicle based off of the M113 APC and was definitely the most difficult vehicle we had to move for the workday. Unfortunately, we couldn't attach to the front of the vehicle which would have made this an easy move because the ARV light was parked in front of it. So what we ended up doing was a complicated ballet where we first pulled the M548 backwards onto the roadway and turned it so it was facing away from the building in the same direction as the Lynx's, drove the T-Lab we used to pull it all the way around the museum so we could turn it around in the compound because otherwise we would have had to tear up the grass and maybe the roadway as well, and then reverse the T-Lab back onto the M548 to move it the rest of the way uh, to its parking spot.
final big move of the day was the Arv Light. This is an armored recovery vehicle variant of the M113, and it was going to be parked between the Lynxes and the M548. Thankfully, it was already parked so that the front of the vehicle was accessible, so all we had to do was connect the T-Lab to it, move it forward, and then maneuver it backwards into its spawn. With the center of the compound tidied up, we're able to freely move around our Jeeps, Iltis, and trailer. Unfortunately, they weren't powered, so we did have to substitute their horsepower with manpower, but the task was easy enough. Finally, we're back at the MLVW, and it's just a matter of putting it back into its original spot facing outwards. Sounds simple, right? Unfortunately, nothing is ever just that simple, and this was most likely the second most difficult vehicle movement we had for the day, because someone had to get inside of the truck and steer it with no power steering in coordination with the crew pushing it. This definitely took a couple of tries to get right, and there will most likely be another separate video showing the complete process of moving the truck to its final parking spot because there was definitely a lot of great vehicle movement footage that I had to cut out for you.
that's how we tidied up the vehicle compound after receiving all the new vehicles at the museum. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this video if you've made it all the way to the end because it's our first one in a while. Also, keep an eye out for a couple other videos in the near future where I use footage I wasn't able to use in this video to show the complete process of moving each vehicle. And that's it. Thanks for watching everyone.